while traveling free. This world of sorrow.
me glad you know my blessed Savior. For through his blood, church, he set us free. Though up the road, come on, I shall not waver. Because some glad day, his face I'll see.
Stop. 
you would want to put him up a praise on the matter. Church, you better meet him in the morning. Amen. To make your day go good. And when you meet the Lord in the morning, amen, he'll be there with you. What a beautiful song that is. Amen. Brother Owen does a wonderful job with that. Amen. Good to have Brother Chris with us this morning. Amen. He's going to come and bless us this morning. Uh, do it now, brother. Amen. Amen. Come and bless us, brother, with a, with a wonderful song this morning. Hallelujah. Let's give him a hand of appreciation as he comes this morning. Uh, everyone this morning thanking the Lord for his blessings Amen, on us and I know that one of these days he's going to come he's coming back for his church and what a day that's going to be Amen. Come on, brother. Yeah, it started out with G there is coming a day come on when no heartache shall come, no more clouds in the sky, yeah. no more tears to dim the eye. All is peace forevermore on that happy golden shore. What a day, glory.
I know they're over there having a great time. Come on, brother. And I see that he's made a promise that one of these days we're going to see them that have gone on. If we live this life for him. Yes. And I know that Satan is out there trying to steal and kill and destroy. And that's what. Yes. <laughs> and I know that I'm out there yes. trying to sing for the Lord. And he knows that it's hard that it, it's it's hard for me because I know he's trying to keep me sequestered, keep things back. Because God has got his hand on me. He's always had his hand yeah, on me. Yeah. And sometimes uh, he tries to come against us. That's not my but I know God is bigger. Yes. <laughs> yes. Says in the word that he's bigger in, our, in us than he is in the world. Right. Well, I don't know what that's to do. Um, uh, he's in G. He's coming back on a silver clouds of glory. He's gonna take us away. Well, I'm looking at all the signs of his returning. Won't be long, maybe speedy. Well, he's coming back. On a silver clouds of glory, he's gonna take me away. Well, I'm looking out for the sign of his return. Won't be long, may just be today. Our deeds have passed long to prepare for me a pleasure.
Matthew chapter 16. And I want to start with the uh, 13th verse. Matthew chapter 16. Amen. But before I get to start reading that, I want to say some things this morning. That we ought to know this morning that Jesus came as our high priest. How many of you believe that this morning? He came as our high priest. Not to substitute a relationship with God. Come on. But to have a relationship with God. Church, we got to have a relationship with God. If not, amen, we're not going to make it. He is our way to a personal relationship with God. If you want to have a way to God, amen, you got to have Jesus Christ as your personal relationship. Yeah. You got to have a relationship yeah. with the Savior. Yeah. You got to have a relationship with the King of Kings. Amen. Yeah. And he said, I am the way, the truth, yeah. and the life. No way coming through the Father yeah. but by me. Amen. You want to get to the Father this morning, church? You got to have a relationship yeah. with Jesus Christ this morning. Yeah. Praise God. How many knows that in everyday life, Yes. Everyday life. The moment you say this is personal, on, everything goes to a different level. Come on. You can be in a conversation with somebody and you can say it is a personal thing. All of a sudden, your conversation with that individual will go in another direction. Amen. Don't worry about the baby. But be both taken care of. Amen. <laughs> I can, I, can, I can overgo her voice. It's all right. Amen. We can have crying babies in the church. That's the church of today. God said He would add unto the church. Yes. Come on, church. Amen. So, but when, the moment you say this is personal, everything goes to a different level. You may be casually visiting, visiting or joking around and sharing things with little thought. But when you say, when you when but when someone says this is personal, come on now. The time of casual joking is over. Yeah. Come on. Amen. Now it's serious. Serious. Yes. Come on. Amen. Have you ever been in a conversation and you said something, you might have hurt somebody, and they look at you and they say, This is personal. Mm -hmm. Amen. And all of a sudden it takes a different route. Yeah. I'm going somewhere this morning. If you just be patient with me, I'll show you. Amen? This is exactly what I hear this morning the Holy Spirit saying today. The time for casual conversation. The joking. The silliness is over. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Pastor Gerald. Preach it, Pastor Gerald. Oh, wow. The time for casual conversation and the time for joking in the church today and the silliness that's going on behind the pulpit, the Holy Spirit is saying, it's over. Oh, it is time to have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Yes, amen. amen. Yes, we can have fun. We can kid one another. But church, when it comes to, to worshiping uh, the Lord, the King of Kings, and having a relationship with Him, it's time that we get in or we yes. get out. Yes. Come on, because God's looking for a remnant yes. that'll yes. serve Him. Amen. Yes. That'll worship Him amen. and praise Him. And that's what I want to talk about. This is personal. This is personal. And I think the Word of God will put all this into perspective. Let us read our text this morning. Matthew chapter 16, starting with the 13th verse. And when Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, He asked His disciples, saying, Who do men say? That I, the Son of Man, am. And they said, Some say thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, others Jeremiah, and or one of the prophets. <coughs> and he said unto them, But whom say ye 
that I am. And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood have not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell. <laughs> yes, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Shall not prevail against him. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Heavenly Father, I come one more time under the, your anointing, dear God, to preach your word. Thank you. And I ask you this morning, dear Lord, to help each and every one of us. And as this goes out on the YouTube and Facebook later, dear Lord, God, let it get a hold of men and women, your Lord, that this must be a personal thing. Lord, I ask you this morning to help me as we rightly divide your word, your Lord, this morning. I thank you, dear Lord, for the songs. I thank you for the anointing that's been here this morning. That's here this morning. I thank you, dear Lord, for each and every soul that's here. And God, I ask you, dear Lord, to bring out your word right now. And we give you praise. We give you glory. And everybody said amen. amen. And amen. I know what I'm going to say will not be a surprise to you this morning. Church, we are at war. Yes. We are at war. Come on now. There is a battle being fought in the soul of America today. Yes. And the nation of the earth. Right now, hell has launched a full out attack yes. against our nation. Yes. And the devil is using right now one of his greatest and most effective tools. It has long been one of the greatest strategies of war. It is distraction warfare. Distraction warfare works by the enemy zeroing on, zeroing on the target, but then throwing all kinds of activity, smoke screens into a different direction yeah. to draw your attention and your energy away from his intended target to look at something else. Am I getting anywhere yet this morning? And this is what is happening in the church world today. Amen. The devil has targeted the true church. Amen. Come on. He's trying to get to the true church. He's trying to distract the church today and take them in another direction, allowing every garbage that man can ever think of come in and be behind the pulpit. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. The devil is trying to distract the church world today. Amen? Watch. We see this happening, and I don't want to get into much politics this morning, but I'm going to be bringing it out to you in a, in a way this morning that you'll understand. We see this happening in the political arena with all this that happened January the 6th. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. And Mar-a-Lago being raided. The Trump uh, place being raided. And certain conservative voices being attacked today. Yes. The FBI, they'll probably throw me right off Facebook right after this. Yeah. 
and the FBI and the DOJ been weaponized and the 87,000 new IRS agents. But I submit to you that this is not really just about our attention of the horrible and destructive things that the White House administration are doing to our country, but the real object today is of the devil is to get our attention yeah. off of Jesus yeah. Christ. Yeah. Amen. It's not about them. It's about the church, the true church, the remnant church that God has, that God wants to put together. He's trying to distract us, to take our eyes off of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Satan knows. He knows. Satan knows that a distracted church is a fractured church. Yes. Amen. Huh? And a fractured church is a weakened church. Yes. The devil knows that his greatest enemy is a church that is unified, unified in and their focus is on Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And their commitment to lift him up to the world. Yeah. Jesus didn't say that I loved Brother Trump. Pastor, or uh, Mr. Trump. Mm -hmm. Jesus didn't say if Trump be lifted up. Come on, that's right. right. Or Joe Biden be lifted up. Come on. Come on. That he would draw all men. He said, if I. If I. Amen. Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. Amen. It's not about me, church. It's not about you. It's about a man yeah. whose name is Jesus Christ, who paid a great price on the cross of Calvary for your and my redemption. Amen. Come on, man. He said, if I be lifted up, Amen. oh, Come on. They didn't know what they did when they put him on that cross and lifted him up. They were filled with his word. Yeah, if I be lifted up, if I be lifted up, I would draw all men unto me. The devil today doesn't really care which direction you look or which distraction tactic works on you as long as he can get your focus and your attention. Off of Jesus. Yeah. He don't care what it takes. That's just right. as long as he can get our focus. That's, right. yeah. huh? That's why this church, no matter who's the pastor, if I'm the pastor, whoever, no matter, come on, as long as I am the pastor of the church and the people, men and women, preach behind this pulpit, we're not going to come up here and give you a side, a, 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 a light show. We're not going to come up here and have a, a, a comedy show. We're not going to come up here and tell jokes. Amen. Uh, come on. Uh, I say some funny things once in a while to keep your attention. But we're going to preach Christ and Him crucified behind the pulpit. Amen. The church wants to bring all the junk in. Let them bring it in. But we are going to preach Jesus Christ. Amen. The devil wants to take our attention and he's winning with a lot of churches. Yes. So, I want to say this again. This is personal. The devil is nothing but a loser. Amen. Amen. Who got kicked out of heaven. Yes. Trying to steal the glory. Yes, he did. That belongs to Jesus alone. That's right. Come on now. I believe the greatest strategy of the church right now is to turn our eyes on Jesus and look full into His wonderful face. Yes. God is about ready to do something. Yeah. I said God is about ready to do something for the true church. The true church. Amen? Amen? Now, tell your neighbor, this is personal. In our text, Jesus asked us, He asked His close disciples, the ones that walked with Him, the ones that talked with Him, He said, Whom 
do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say, Thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. So the disciples begin to rehearse to Jesus, watch this, what they heard others say about Him. Come on, I'm going to get some word now. He heard them rehearse what they heard from others. Oh, come on, church. They said, some say thou art John the Baptist. Some Elias and other Jeremiah and one of the prophets. I have a pretty good imagination. <laughs> so I can imagine Jesus as he listens, as the disciples share their <coughs> second hand information. Come on now. <laughs> with him. Possibly he was nodding his head while they were saying that. Huh? And maybe even sounded like he was impressed at what people were saying about him. Think about this. Now, I'm not criticizing the disciples at all. The truth is this is fair. That was exactly what Jesus asked them for. He asked them for what? Second-hand information. Some of you are going to get this in a little bit. Hang on. Or you're going to go down the road here in about 20 minutes, half an hour, and you're going to say, Whoa! I know what the pastor was saying now. You're going to get it, though. One way or the other. You're going to get it. <laughs> but after they had finished telling Jesus, what they had heard about him, Jesus drills down with them yeah. and puts it to them directly. Yeah. They told him, they told them what they heard. Uh -huh. But Jesus says, But whom say ye? Yeah. Yes. Come on. Say ye. Who are you? What are you saying? Come on. I am. Yeah, come on. I don't want, come on, church. He doesn't want to hear secondhand information. He wants to know that you have a relationship with him. Yes, Amen. It must be personal. Yes. Huh? <laughs> or today he would probably say, but who do you say I am? I want to bring your attention to this one word Jesus spoke. He said, but. Well, yeah. But. Uh -huh. That stopped it all. Yeah. That got personal. Yeah. That one word changes the complexion of the whole conversation. With that one word, Jesus dismisses all their research. Oh, man. Yeah. And all the second-hand information that, that they had gathered about him, Brother Vaughn. Yeah. Huh? He said, I don't want to hear what you've heard. That's right. Huh? I want to know who you think I am. That's right. Come on, church. Amen. Amen. There's a lot of people in the church that has a second second-hand relationship Come on. with the Lord. But the Lord wants you to ask you and you and you and you every one of them, who do you think I am? Right. Come on, church. Amen. I don't want to give him secondhand information. I want to give him what he's done for me. I want to give him, tell him who he is. Amen. And I want to show him that there is a relation. Come on, church. Somebody preach with me this morning. There must be a relationship with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. There's too many in the church today has a secondhand relationship. But I want a firsthand on the basic relationship with the King of Kings. Watch this. Come on. I'm going to use my 
my word this morning. It's going to get gooder. It's going to get gooder here in a minute. He said, with that one word, Jesus changes everything. Why is Jesus so adamant about this? Why was he so adamant about asking his disciples, do you know who I am? People were saying some amazing things about Jesus. Why was it so important that his disciples go beyond hearsay? <clears throat> Why did Jesus press them by saying, but who do you say I am? This is the reason why. Jesus knew that secondhand information is not relationship. Amen. 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 Second-hand relationship. Come on. Second-hand re information is not a relationship. That's right. All the information that they could gather would never produce relationship. Jesus was not looking for a community poll. How is Jesus of Nazareth polling today? Good question. Yeah. Popular opinion didn't mean a thing to Jesus. Amen. 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 But he had to start with them there. Amen. Because that's where they were at. Yeah. But what Jesus had to make them understand is he can't be a second hand Jesus. Amen. He can't be a second-hand Savior. He can't be a second-hand healer. He can't be a second-hand deliverer. Church, he's got to be number one in all. Now take this the right way. It really doesn't matter who he was to your grandma. Or your grandpa. It doesn't matter what that your daddy and mama walked with him intentionally. Come on, think about it. It doesn't matter. Take this the right way. If you learn the Bible by chapter and verse and the old hymns of the church by heart and can sing them all from memory. But Jesus, who is Jesus to you? Huh? So Jesus pressed His disciples just like He presses us today. <coughs> he isn't impressed by how much we know about Him. Huh? The question is, do you know Him? Amen. Come on, church. He don't care if you can get up here and sing from your heart. That's great. You know, I, I have to have words. My memory... That's just the way I am. Accept it. If you don't like it, rub it. <laughs> huh? But if you get up here and sing, like Brother Chris, Brother Owen, without even looking at the words, great. I'm behind you. Uh -huh. Huh? I can't do that sometimes. But that doesn't matter, church. If you don't know who He is. Right. You can sing the greatest in the world. You can play the greatest instrument. You can read every note, memorize every scripture in the Bible. Huh? But if you don't have a relationship with Him. Don't blame me for these messages. Go to Texas and talk to Brother Tom Wells. He's one who brought it up to Ohio a long time ago about relationship. And we've been chewing on it ever since. It's like an old dog chewing on an old ball. Right. And there's still a little bit of meat left. We're still fighting. Right. Unless you and I have a relationship with Jesus. Mm -hmm. 
we don't know who he is. That's right. All we have is second-hand information. Amen. 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 So Jesus pressed his disciples. And he's pressing us. Do you know him? Matthew 4.22 says, Matthew 4.22, Jesus said, Many will say to me that, that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name cast out devils, and in thy name done wonderful works. And then I will profess unto you them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. See, those are all second-hand relationships. Huh? A lot of people call themselves Christians because they sing secular music or songs. Come on. But the Lord here just tells us, not everybody. Many will say to me, many so-called Christians, Come on, you get quiet on me. Don't be quiet on me now. Huh? We'll say, well, Lord, we say, I memorized the whole Bible. But you didn't have a relationship with me. The whole mission, the purpose of the church is summed up in the one sentence. To know Him and make Him known. Huh? To know Him and make him known. Yes. Amen? I dare say hell will be full of people who know a lot about Jesus and a lot of people who went to church <coughs> and raised their hands, stopped their feet on the fast songs, cried on the slow songs, but they do not know him. They have not entered into the intimacy of a relationship with Jesus Christ. When the two became one, Amen! You've been bought with a price. Amen. You do not own yourself. Right. Come on. Millions of people are going to be speechless when they stand before Jesus and He asks them, Who do you say that I am? Come on, church. Then there's something you have to understand about our text here. <coughs> Jesus knows that there is a principle in God that says, you have what you say, and you can, have, you can only have what you say. <coughs> Get that. You have what you say. You can only have what you say. Jesus knows that he can, only, he can only be to his disciples who they say he is to them. Yes, good show. Come on. Did you get that? Jesus, Jesus, he knows that he can only be to the disciples. Who they say he is to them. Yes. We just read it. <laughs> yes. That's why Jesus asked him, But who do you say that I am? Yes. Huh? Jesus shows us that everything we receive from God is qualified by our confession. What do you mean? Faith without confession is like a car with no motor. Some of you will do that later. It's not going anywhere. It's just going to look pretty out there in rust. So, somehow, David got a hold of a revelation. In Psalms 91-2, Psalms 91-2, we hear him say this about God. He said, I will say of the Lord, confession. Yes. He is my refuge. Yes. 
He is my fortress. My God, in Him will I trust. Listen to what David says about God in Psalms 18, 1 and 2. He says, I will love Him, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock. And my fortress, and my deliverer, my God, my strength, and whom I will trust, my butler, and the horn of my salvation, and of my high tower. Church, listen to what? Just to that, he said, my strength, my rock, my fortress, my deliverer, yeah. my God, my strength, my butler, the horn of my salvation. <laughs> the high tower. Yes. Amen. He had a personal, personal relationship with God. Amen. Amen. He confessed who he was. He knew who he was. Yes. <coughs> Somehow the Holy Spirit had revealed to David that God had been had limited his presence in the manifestation of his power in his life to the level of his David confession. Yeah. So David began to confess what? With his mouth. Yes. Amen. Come on. Everything that he believed God and needed God to be, come on church, in his life. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Come on. He's only going to be in your life and my life when we start confessing. Huh? When we have a relationship with Him and say He is, come on, He is, He is my butler, He is my deliverer, He is my healer, He is my Savior. And then why? Because I got a relationship with Him. It is personal to me who He is. Who is He to you? Huh? Is He secondhand information? Hallelujah. Church ought to be full. Amen. <coughs> Let's, let, let me remind you one more time in this church. You're allowed to clap hands. You're allowed to shout. You're allowed to say amen. You're allowed to get up and say, Preach it, Pastor Gerald. Preach it. You're allowed to do that. Hey man, we don't set no rules in here. <coughs> All right. Jesus pressed his disciples for their own confession. Because he knew that it didn't matter what the populace opinion of him was. He could only be to them and in them who they not only believed Him to be, but who they confessed yes, Him to be. We don't know how long Jesus waited for an answer. The Bible doesn't tell us. But it seems like the disciples were caught completely off guard. Yep. Amen. Mm. See, that's how the Lord works. Finally, after an uncomfortable pause and a defending, deafening silence, Peter, Peter bursts out. Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Listen to Jesus' response. And Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed are thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and, flesh and blood have not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. Yes, I know. In other words, church, Jesus is saying the only way you're going to have this and know this is to have a relationship yes. with me. Oh. Amen. Come on, and I will give you a revelation. Yes. Come on. See, the Holy Spirit gave, gave Peter a revelation. Amen. Because 
Thou art the Son of God. Come on. God. Come on. Everything that we have comes from heaven. Amen. Amen. You can study the Word all you want. But the revelation that the Lord will give you is through the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. He will give you a revelation yeah. when you get into the Word and get a relationship with Him. Yeah. Then He'll give you a revelation. Yeah. Now watch this. In other words, Jesus is saying, Peter, you have just moved into a blessing zone. Amen. Huh? Amen. I don't know about you, church, but I want to live in the blessing zone. Yes. In other words, the blessings will chase me down. Amen. 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 He'll bless me coming. He'll bless me going. Yes. Come on. With this confession, what happened? Peter separated himself from all the information, gathering, gossip, and opinion holes. Yep. And he stood alone that day. Yes, he did. Amen. Come on. Separated from his friends, separated from the neighbors, not by a wall, or not even by a confession alone, but by his confession of a revelation. Yeah. Amen. 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 In other words, at that very moment, it became personal for Peter. Are you hearing me in this morning? At that moment, Peter went from the sands of philosophy, the logic, the theories, the ideologies, to the rock of ages. He went from the shifting sands of men's reasonings to the solid, unshakable rock of revelation. Jesus immediately recognized the shift. And he says to Peter, he says to Peter, that's what I'm talking about. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Somebody finally got it. Amen. Maybe that's not what he said. That's my own words. But if he can say that, hello, you got it. Amen. Finally somebody got it. It's time for the church to finally get a hold of it. He said, this is what I've been ta telling you. This is personal. Huh? This is how you get the revelation. Come on, you can't get a re revelation unless you have a personal re relationship with God. Amen. Huh? Brother Tom, I know you'll watch this later. I know you'll probably preach this too. Amen. Because he told me that was good. I may preach that at home. At home. We got to have, come on, and you cannot get a revelation unless you have a personal relationship with God. Yes. It's got to be personal. personal. Yeah. Now, then listen to what follows. Jesus says to Peter, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona. Now listen to what Jesus says in Matthew 16, 18, 19. He said, I, I say unto thee, thou art Peter. Peter translated means little rock or little stone or a piece of rock. Jesus has changed his name from Simon or Jonas to Peter. And Jesus said, upon this revelation you have received. Yeah. In other words, upon this rock, upon this rock, I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give up to thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and whatsoever you shall loose upon the earth shall be loosed in heaven. Foundational truth. Now watch this. As I said, Jesus states to Peter that upon this personal relationship, revelation of who I am, he said, I'm going to build my church. Then he says, the gates of hell shall not prevail against it, and I will give them to you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Church, listen to me. Listen to me right now. You cannot get anything loosed 
I don't care how much you pray until you get a revelation and a relationship with Jesus Christ. Huh? You can say all the prayers in the world until you have a relationship with Jesus Christ and know Him personally. Amen? Nothing will get loosed. Come on, you may disagree, that's fine. I don't care. Amen? But I believe it in my spirit that the Lord is saying to the church, unless you have a relationship, I cannot give you no revelation. And by revelation, you cannot lose anything unless you have a relationship with me and know who I am. We can cry and move who all we want. But we got to have that. It's got to be personal. Huh? It's got to be a personal relationship. Let's see. I got to hurry here. The word was not spoken just to Peter for Peter's sake. The word was spoken to Peter representatively of anyone who will not settle for the shifting sands of religion, the tradition, philosophies of men, but will press in and contend for that personal, intimate relation, fellowship and relationship with Jesus Christ. Yeah. Are you hearing me? That will give birth to your own personal revelation of who Jesus is. Huh? If you wonder why so much of the church... Now, wait a minute, let me back up here. If you wonder why so much of the church is wimpy, powerless today, the answer is right here. Sadly, the majority of the church world has substituted the undependable, shifting, foundationless sands of feel-good religion and compromised theology and watered-down doctrine for the pure, unadulterated gospel of Jesus Christ they have traded revelation that comes only through relationship for second-hand information Come on. Come on. that requires nothing but a casual church affiliation. No wonder the world today, no wonder the world today mocks the church. No wonder the world today makes her the butt of their sitcom jokes. Hello? Let's be honest about it. That kind of lukewarm, self-pleasing, comfort-seeking, flesh-pleasing church is a joke. Huh? And that church will never have any power with God. But the church... Who, that walks with God and lives by revelation through relationship Amen. is going to be the devil's worst nightmare. Yes, it is. And we're going to do it so in sync with heaven that he will know what to bind and what when to bind it and what to loose and went to loose, and heaven will back us up. Amen. Come on, church. But you got to have that revelation through relationship. And once again, we will be the salt of the earth, the light of the world, the city that is set on a hill that cannot be hid, and there will be miracles. And there will be signs and there will be wonders and Jesus Christ will be glorified. Yes, hallelujah. And hell will be horrified. Huh? Let me close. This is what is happening in the church today. There is a sifting that is taking place. The dividing line is those who are satisfied with second-hand information and with religious affiliation on one side 
And on the other side are those who have gone beyond casual Sunday morning religion. They have a personal relationship with Jesus. And they walk and talk with God every day. Brother Owen sang it beautifully. Yeah. Early in the morning. Mm -hmm. Come on, church. And they have a personal revelation of who he is. Uh -huh. I know he can heal me. Brother Chris, I know he saved me. Yeah. I know he's blessed me, Brother Bob. Yeah, Brother Bob, I know he's put food on my table. Huh? But Tim, I know he's paid my bills. Come on, church. I know that he can do that. But I'm not worried about that. The Bible seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, then all these things shall be under unto you. When I have that revelation and relationship of Jesus Christ, amen, those things will follow. Yeah. He'll take care of the bills when they come. He'll take care of the food when there ain't no food in the refrigerator. He'll take care of it when the clothes need to be replaced. He'll take care of it. Yeah. Yeah. Praise God. But you got to have that relationship yes. with Jesus Christ. Now, Psalms 25 14 said, The secret of the Lord is with them that fear Him. Yes. And He will show them His covenant. Church, this is personal. My relationship with God is personal. We can all put on a good show for those around us. We can play the part better than Hollywood can. And we can fool a lot of people. But I'm here to tell you, you can't fool the Holy Spirit. He knows everything about us. And when you boil it all down, this is the sum of the matter. Who is He to you? Amen. Huh? I want to know more about my Lord, Sister Linda. Huh? I'm not where I want to be where the Lord wants me to be. If you're there, amen, tell me how you got there. But as I look around, none of us are there yet. We've all got growing pains. Yeah, amen. Huh? We all need more revelation. Amen. We all need to draw closer to the Lord. Amen. amen. Come on. We all do. Amen. And when we do that, amen. God will loose things upon this earth. God will bind things upon this earth. Come on. Amen. amen. Church, it's personal. Who is He to you? Who is He to you? This is personal. Huh? I know who He is. Yes. I'm not going on just second-hand information. Right. Amen. I want to go on first-hand basis. Yes. Amen. I want to hear Him call my name. Oh, Amen. Yes. Amen. I heard God's audible voice one time. And He called me by my first name years ago. I have yet to hear His voice again. I know it was God. It brought me right out of my bed. All He said was, George. And I woke up. And I knew that I knew Brother Rodney. It was God yes. speaking to me. Yep. Amen. I want to get back. Amen. Come on. I like what your brother, brother, I think it was Brother Corey said the other night. He said, you know, we sing that song. I'll go back to the enemy camp and take what the devil stole from us. Amen. I don't want to take back what he stole from me because I don't want it. It's been depleted already. I want fresh anointing us from the throne of God. I want new today. And God has new for us. He's got more than you can imagine this morning. Oh, praise God. Huh? Church, we haven't scratched the surface. Amen. Amen. we got to get to that point. Amen. And each and every one of us has to have that personal relationship Amen. with Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. 
Huh? I can't. I love my mom and dad. My mom and dad, I talk about them all the time. They had a great relationship. I believe mom walked with God daily. Amen. Amen. But that's not going to get me to heaven. Right. Amen. Mom can sing, and there ain't no grave going to hold my body down and bring down heaven. That's not going to get me to heaven. I got to have that personal relationship with Jesus Christ myself. Yes. Huh? A lot of people think that, oh, my mom and grandma went to church. I'm going to go to heaven. Now they went to heaven. No, 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 no. You're not. No, you're not. Unless you have a relationship. Huh? Jesus is asking the world today, who am I to you? Who am I? Huh? Who is he to you today? Is he second-hand information? As the disciples gave him? That's what they gave him? They say. Some say. Huh? But Jesus got right to the core. But who do you say I am? 